Good morning, folks. We're going to hit electroquakes, solar climate forcing, and more evidence of the past disasters on the planet. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun were pretty quiet. There have been numerous little eruptions the last few days, but nothing major, and the same goes for those coronal hole streams, and there was absolutely no eruptions on the Earth-facing disk yesterday. The solar item to note the last day and a half is the dance of the filaments around the limb. 304 angstroms here showing ionized helium released near the northern polar crown and another by the equatorial region at the end. Watch how different those dances appear in 171 angstroms showing ionized iron twisting out beautifully. Folks, it's important to remember that location and depth are as or more important than earthquake magnitude. After no injuries or death from the 8.2 in Alaska, we've got quite a bit of damage from just a 6.1 in Peru. Up next is ARP-195. They say it is a triple galaxy collision. Interestingly, I only see two cores, which makes me wonder if that's a bridge between them. But either way, this is one of Halton ARP's peculiar galaxies, and it remains in that category to this day. Up first in the articles today is a great one on the electromagnetic pre-seismic phenomena. This not only includes aspects of the global electric circuit and OLR, long wave radiation, but cloud effects as well. Excellent review article there. As predicted, the Earth's rotation data we've been seeing climb off the charts has been wiped. It made it to almost 4 milliseconds fast this time, but yesterday they took it all back, bouncing the fastest day of the year back to July in the predictions. We will keep you updated as this thing is changing as much as the difference between my digital and analog clocks. Now folks, our penultimate story today is one that does sit on the right side of the fence, affirmatively calling out solar forcing of the terrestrial climate. However, in what can be a lesson for all observers, read how the paper argues and fights with itself over the findings. The data suggests the forcing is strong, but they can't figure out how the irradiance forcing mechanisms could produce such a climate effect. The answer is in the title, and indeed, irradiance was all that was used. And when you don't use cosmic rays, solar wind, another particle forcing, or the coupling with the sun's interplanetary magnetic field, you might be able to tie the climate data to solar patterns, but you'll have no idea how it works. How it works and a whole lot more is found in our textbook, which is indeed sold out in hard copy, but we do still have the PDF at our online store. Last but not least, another example of sediment showing what we hope it to show. While the NOAA event could not be recorded in this location due to the heat and trends of the Holocene, the Younger Dryas, Heinrich Event 1, and Last Glacial Maximum are all there. That's Gothenburg, Helenopoly, and the Lake Mungo magnetic events on the planet. Next geomagnetic climate disaster is unfolding now, and you can learn more at the disaster playlist linked beneath the video in the description box. We greatly appreciate your support. Got wind maps and shots of our star to close? Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.